Hello everyone, this is your instructor in Business Tax and welcome to the first part of VAT on Importation. So we will now continue with VAT on Importation. In this particular video, we will be discussing the part 1 of VAT on Importation. Take note, yung mga previous discussions natin doon sa consumption taxes, I noted there na sa bawat klase ng consumption ay may mga exempt. And you know the types of consumption that are subject to tax. Kung galing sa abroad, we impose VAT on importation. Of course, my exemption doon na minention ko for some reasons. And then, doon din sa consumption from Philippine sources, we have business tax. It is a qualified form of consumption tax. Now, ang ating uunahin doon kasi malaki yung consumption tax imposed on domestic sales or yung business tax, uunahin natin itong VAT on importation because it is a smaller topic. So, uulitin ko, yung VAT on importation, do not forget na taxable ang importation ng goods and services basta dinala sa Pilipinas. Ang tinatax natin ay yung pagdala ng goods, yung acquisition of goods by Philippine residents. So, engagement in business is not an issue. Negosyante o hindi yung foreign sellers, the VAT on importation will still apply. Basta dinala dito yung goods at kapag kinonsume dito yung goods, kinonsume for personal use or for business purpose, matatax yan. Do not forget that walang business na factor dito. Basta may goods na dumating dito that is subject to the VAT on importation. Now, do not forget also na dalawang klase ito. Import of goods which is the normal scenario and meron din yung tinatawag na import of services. What is that import of services? When non-residents render services here in the Philippines to business entities. Meron tayong VAT on importation doon na ang tawag ay final withholding VAT. So I'm hoping that those concepts are still clear in your mind. Now, let's discuss the VAT on importation. The first thing you need to know is yung mga exempt importation. There are importations of goods na hindi pinapatawan ng taxes. Kasi pwedeng necessity sila, pwedeng yung pagkakadala nila dito ay hindi siya consumption. Pwedeng pumasok lang dito at dadalhin din lang siya sa labas. Kumbaga, Temporary lang na nandito. For example, yung mga pumasok sa economic zones and then ipaprocess tapos ilalabas. Hindi yun ginamit dito kaya hindi lang din matatax. Another, yung pagdala dito ng mga personal na kagamitan ng tao na kanya naman na dati yun. Of course, that is not considered consumption for um, tax purposes. So, may mga ganun tayong ine-exempt dyan. Now, kapag hindi siya pasok sa listahan ng exempt importation, vatable na siya. Vatable importation na siya. At kapag vatable importation, kukumputan na natin yan ng value-added tax which is 12% of landed cost. Now, mag-focus muna tayo dito sa exempt importation. Dito sa exempt importation, meron tayong tinatawag na exempt goods. What else? We have also import or importation by VAT exempt persons. Itong exempt goods, kahit sino ang nagdala dito sa loob ng Pilipinas. Yan ay hindi matatax kasi nga yung goods mismo na dinala dito ay exempt from consumption tax. Hindi siya masasubject to VAT on importation. Now, itong import or importation by VAT exempt persons, there are certain entities that are conferred with exemption. May mga certain entities na kapag sila ang nag-import, hindi sila matatax, hindi sila mavavat, pero sila lang. Now, ang pagkakaiba dyan, since yung goods ay vatable, 
exemption lang is anchored on the fact na that importer is not taxable. So because of that, kapag pumasok yung goods, walang tax sa kanya. Pero kung ibebenta niya sa iba, matatax as importer yung bumili. Ganon yung nature ng exemption ng import by VAT exempt persons. Unlike yung exempt goods, kasi kapag pumasok yung goods, exempt. Ibenta man niya, exempt din. Kasi nga, yung goods mismo is exempt from consumption tax. Maske VAT on importation, um, yan o business tax, yan. Walang imposition sa kanya. Kaya maganda yung mga yan kasi ipasa-pasa man between buyers, uh, buyers and sellers, walang tax na ini-impose sa kanila. Itong import by VAT exempt person, yung pagpasok niya, exempt. Pero kapag ibenta niya to a non-exempt person, matatax yung non-exempt person as the importer. Next, Third is quasi-importation or quasi-importation. Quasi-importation or quasi-importation kasi nga, it involves bringing of goods here in the Philippines but that bringing of goods here is not consumption. Yung dinadala dito is not meant for domestic consumption. And lastly, Importation exempt by treaty. So, kasama dyan yung mga international convention kung meron man. Do you remember the international committee? Di ba kapag foreign government na ang kasama, hindi natin iniimpose yung ating taxing power. Kasi nga, foreign government iyon. Lahat ng nation ay equal in the eyes of international law. Tayo naman, we confer the same treatment as far as other countries are concerned. So kapag fellow government na yan, ang katransak natin, kapag fellow government na ang katransak natin, hindi natin tinatax. So kapag may usapan tayo with foreign government, we are bound to follow that agreement. Now, for exempt goods, ang una dyan ay agricultural and marine food products in original state. Ito yung mga natural na kinakain natin. So, human food ito. Food products na naproproduce out of agriculture, out of fisheries. Or pwedeng raw sila na naproduce by nature. Basta produkto. Produkto ng lupa, ng tubig, basta kinakain ng tao. So marami yan. Pwedeng yung mga karne, pwedeng yung mga isda, pwedeng itlog ng manok, prutas, gulay, grains, etc. So food ang tandaan mo. So the importation of the following agricultural or marine food products is example. First, grapes, Apples, oranges, and other fruits. We also have vegetables, tea, ginseng, rice, corn, coffee beans, and other edible foreign products. Marine food such as fish and crustaceans, poultry and livestock, milk, eggs, meat for human consumption. So, nadyan na sa baba yung examples ng livestock, poultry, and marine food. So, food ang tandaan mo. Kasi kapag non-food, agricultural, and marine food products, may VAT on importation yon. So, the importation of the following non-food, agricultural, or marine food products is subject to the VAT on importation. We have logs, woods, or wood, bamboos, orchids, and similar food products, rubber hem, abaca, tobacco, topical herbs, cotton, and other non-food crops, Shells, corals, and other non-food marine products usually used as ornaments, racehorse, fighting cocks, aquarium fish, zoo animals, and other animals generally considered as pets. Yung bamboo, 
na example natin dito, hindi yan kinakain. So, vatable good yang bamboo. How about bamboo shoot? Of course, dahil food yon example. Basta, tignan natin yung gamit ng agricultural or marine product. Dapat, food siya for human consumption. Okay? Pangkain. How about manok? Manok, in general, poultry. Yan ay example. Sir, what if paano kapag yung purpose ng manok ay pang cockfight, pang sabong? Well, iba na yon. Kasi ang gamit ng manok na yon ay hindi for food. Pang cockfighting siya. E dahil yon ay pang cockfighting, ang purpose niya ay human entertainment, not food. So kapag ganon, yung importation of fighting cocks is vatable. Now, sabi niya dyan, sir, in original state. Sir, anong ibig sabihin ng in original state? Ang ibig sabihin niyan ay unprocessed. However, an agricultural or marine food product is still considered in its original state even if it has undergone simple process of preparation or preservation for the market including advanced technological means of packaging. So even though may alteration na nangyari sa kanya basta walang change in the chemical composition of the goods, walang substantial alteration, so in original state pa rin siya, even though dumaan siya sa simple process of preparation or preservation at advanced technological means of packaging. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng in-original state. So, here are examples of simple process of preparation or preservation for the market. So, freezing, drying, salting, broiling, roasting, smoking, stripping, and grinding. Let's say, for example, baboy. Ang hagba, pangkain ba yan ng tao? Yung mga swine or pigs? Yes, pangkain. Pero of course, hindi natin kinakain ng buo iyan. Diba? Ang ginagawa natin, chinachop-chop natin yung pigs. So, chinap lang. You reduce the size lang. That is only a preparatory act. So, it is still considered in original state. So, ang pork chop ba? Exempt ba? Yes, exempt. Because it is still considered in original state. So, binilad mo siya sa araw, naging dried meat na siya, for example, naging itag. That is drying. Of course, exempt pa rin yon, kasi in original state pa rin yon. E paano kung gusto mo yung giling? So, ground meat. That is grinding. So, that is also exempt. Sir, what if ginawa siyang canned goods? Of course, canning na yon. Kapag canning kasi, Advance na yon. Hindi na siya simple process kasi may mga machineries or equipment na na involved. So, considered na siya as processed goods kapag canned. By the way, ito yung mga advanced processes. Yung una ay yung canning na binanggit natin kanina. Pwede rin yung fermentation katulad ng ubas. Finerment mo, naging alak Yung alak, yung wine, is no longer in original state. Processed na yon. Kapag naging suka, processed na yon. So ano pa ba aside from canning and the fermentation, we also have pasteurization. Considered as advanced process din yon. So meron siyang state altering kasi. Actually, pati yung marinating. Kinonsider ng BIR yon as advanced process. Yung pagmamarinate ng karne or milk fish. Yung pagmamarinate ng bangus is considered as advanced process by the BIR kasi marami daw siyang preparatory process. That is the rule right now. So those are examples of advanced processes. Now, another example of simple process is boiling. 
pinainitan mo lang, pinakuluan mo lang ng tubig. That is not complex. That is very simple. So, yung boiled eggs, for example, it is still considered in original state. So, kung mapapansin nyo, yung concept na kapag hindi luto, kapag raw, exempt, kapag luto na, taxable, hindi ganon. Even if may ginawa kang process like yung pagluluto, kung simple lang siya, simple act of heating, broiling, stripping, boiling, kapag ganun lang, it is still considered in original state. Now, how about lichon? Tignan natin kung ano yung proseso ng lichon. Heating lang. It involves heating lang. Simple process ba? Yes, simple. So, ano yung lichon? Exempt yung lichon. Ang concept ay hindi yung luto. Taxable. Hindi ganon. Mas kiluto yan kapag yung process na pinagdaanan niya ay simple lang, yon ay exempt. I repeat, marinating is an advanced process. So kapag nag-import ka ng marinated meat, that is vatable. Pate drying, that is a simple process. Dried na palay. Sinandry lang, drying is simple. So kapag ganon, that is example. Now, yung palay, giniling mo, natanggal yung ipa. What did you do? Stripping yon. Pagtatanggal ng balat, binalatan mo lang. So husking. Husking ng palay nga para maging rice. Husk rice. Husking is a simple process. So that is example. Sir, nag-import ako ng fish, raw fish. Ano yon? Example. Sir, ano? Nag-import ako ng dried fish. Anong ginawa? Minilad lang sa araw. Example, kasi simple yung process. Sir, nag-import ako ng canned fish. Canned sardines, for example. Well, canned sardines are manufactured. They involve canning, and canning is complex. Yon ay vatable. Ngayon, when you preserve the agricultural and marine food products, hindi siya considered na advanced process or complex process or complex process. Kasi nga, preservation is merely intended to prolong the shelf life of the product without doing any processing on it. Pre-preserve mo lang yung shelf life. And what are the things that are done to prolong the shelf life of agricultural and marine food products? Una dyan ay freezing. Nag-import ako ng frozen fish, frozen meat. Taxable ba yon? Hindi. Kasi freezing is just a simple act of preservation. Another is salting. Sometimes, to preserve meat, we put salt on it. So, salted meat, for example, in-import mo. Example din yon, Kasi nga, simple act of preservation lang yung salting. Drying is actually another technique of preservation. Para ma-prolong mo siya, i-dry mo siya. So, dried fish for example. Yung drying can be viewed as a simple act of preservation. So, drying is non-state altering for purposes of this. Now, aside from simple process of preparation or preservation, consider then as in original state yung advanced technological means of packaging. Alam nyo kasi, yung packaging is putting the product in a medium that will make it conducive for transport and eventual sale. So, meron kasi tayong mga tinatawag na packaging technique, yung mga tinatawag na tetra pack. Yung fresh juice, for example, nilagay mo lang sa tetra pack. Hindi porke naka-tetra pack na siya ay processed na. Wala kang ginawa doon sa fresh juice. Nilagay mo lang sa tetra pack at hindi porke may plastic na, eh, processed na. Basta ang importante, hindi advanced yung ginamit na process sa juice. Eh sir, paano yung binibenta nila na juice na nakatetra pack na? Yung mga nabibili 
sa supermarket. Yung mga yun kasi, talagang na-manufacture yung mga yon. Kaya nga, ang tagal-tagal ng shelf life ng mga processed juice na yon. Kaya normally, yung mga commercial juice na nakatetra pack, of course, those are taxable because of the process that they went through. Pero kapag yung buko juice lang, for example, nilagay mo sa tetra pack, exempt yun. Or yung buko juice, so for example, nilagay mo siya sa plastic cup, hindi siya matatax porque naka-plastic cup siya. Kasi walang process na ginawa sa juice. Nilagay lang siya in a container that will make it conducive for transport or handling. So maske naka-tetra pack yan, maske naka-vacuum pack yan, maske naka-shrink wrap yan, it is still considered in original state. Basta walang advanced process na ginawa dun sa content. Next, yung vacuum packing, yung vacuum packing, yun yung may cellophane. Tatanggalan ng hangin yun para walang hangin sa loob. Yun ang vacuum packing. Another one is yung shrink wrapping. Yung karne, for example, lagyan mo ng plastic, balutan mo ng plastic, painitan mo yung plastic para mag-shrink. Uh, para mag-shrink. That is shrink wrapping. So, alam mo na kung ano ang state altering at kung ano yung non-state altering. Kapag na-alter yung state ng agricultural and marine food products, vatable na kapag in-import. Pero kapag Russia or in original state, exempt. Now, for additional information, the following are examples of agricultural or marine food products in their original state. Husk rice, corn grits, raw cane sugar, roasted coffee beans, ordinary salt, copra, dried fish, sun-dried fruits, ground meat, and smoked fish. So the importation of these products in original state is exempt from that. Examples of processed products considered as not in their original state are refined sugar, wine or vinegar, butter, canned sardines or mackerel, vegetable or coconut oil, and soy. So the importation of these processed products and those considered not in their original state shall be subject to VAT on importation. Now, paano kung nagbebenta ka ng greens, for example, na intended for animals? Paano yon? Let's proceed to letter B, fertilizers, seeds, seedlings, fingerlings, fish, prawn, livestock, and poultry feeds, including ingredients used in the manufacture of finished feeds. So ganito, para mas madaling tandaan, basta ilagay mo sa isipan mo pagkain ng kinakain ng tao. Katulad din ng fertilizers, ilalagay mo sa vegetables or fruit-bearing trees, yung vegetables, lalaki siya, so kakainin natin. Or ilalagay mo sa fruit-bearing trees, so for example, lalaki yung trees, magbe-bear ng fruits, kakainin ng tao. Seeds, basically, lalaki yung seeds and magpo-produce ng fruit for human consumption. Ganon din sa seedlings, lalaki din yan, magbe-bear ng fruits for human consumption. So fingerlings, so parang inputs, inputs for production of human food and including food for those inputs or including food of those inputs. Yung seeds and seedlings, inputs yan. Anong kinakain nila? E de, fertilizers. Yung fingerlings, fish, prawn, livestock, yung mga mag-asawang baboy, for example, pati genetic materials ng mga yan, basta ginagamit pang produce ng human food, yan ay exempt. Yung fingerlings, Maliit na isda yan. Siyempre, papakainin nyo o papakainin mo yan, lalaki yan, later on, kakainin natin. So eventually, that is for human consumption. So that is example. 
So feeds of animals that are intended for human consumption are exempt. Pagkain ng kakainin ng tao. So exempt. So yung mga inputs, animals man yan or plants, at yung mga kinakain ng mga animals at plants, such as fertilizers and feeds, exempt ang mga yan. However, the importation of specialty feeds, for example, pet feeds, ay taxable as it is not intended for ultimate human consumption. Sir, paano yung pag-maintain sa kanila? For example, sa baboy, di ba ang mga baboy merong pest control? Para secured ang piggery, may mga pest control tayo para walang daga na pumupunta doon. For example, yung mga pananim, meron tayong pesticides para sa mga kulisap na umaatake sa pananim. Meron tayong herbicide para hindi talunin ng damo yung pananim. Yung mga yon, hindi naman kinakain ng pananim yon. Yung pesticide, yung herbicide, yung anti-pest control na yan sa animals, man yan, or sa plants, those are taxable. Yung mga makinarya na ginagamit natin sa farm, hindi naman kinakain ng animals yon or ano. So those are taxable. Basta ganun ang key. Inputs. Yung mga bagay na pinapalaki natin, at yung mga kakainin nila para lumaki bago natin sila kainin. So other farming implements such as pesticides and herbicides are subject to VAT on importation. Note also that the exemption covers only those farm and fishery inputs enumerated by law. The importation of farm fishery, or fishing equipment such as fishing boats, tractors, plow, threshers, and harvesters is subject to VAT. Take note, itong letter A at letter B, the reason for exemption is human necessity. Pagkain ng tao. Hindi pwedeng i-VAT yan kasi kapag i-VAT yan, magugutom ang tao kapag hindi nila ma-afford. Kaya hindi siya tinatax. Now, here are the rules on VAT taxation of poultry and feeds. Yung importation ng livestock and poultry ay exempt. Pero yung importation ng pets ay VATable. Yung importation ng feeds for livestock and poultry ay exempt. Pero yung importation ng feeds for pets ay VATable. Yung importation ng feed ingredients for livestock and poultry ay exempt. Pero yung importation ng feed ingredients for pets ay VATable. Take note that the importation of ingredients for the processing of goods for human consumption is vatable because processed human food are vatable. Next, letter C, books and any newspaper, magazine, review, or bulletin which appear at regular intervals with fixed prices for subscription and sale and which is not devoted principally to the publication of paid advertisements. Letter C is of course understood for education yan and information. Well, of course, binavalue ng constitution ang education, pati freedom of information na kalagay sa ating constitution yan. Kaya yung importation ng books, newspapers, magazine, review, or bulletin ay exempt. But take note that there are two conditions for exemption. Unang-una, they must appear at regular intervals with fixed prices for subscription. At pangalawa, the sale must not be devoted principally to the publication of paid advertisements. Meaning to say, dapat meron yung informative value pa rin nila. A good example is Reader's Digest. Nag-import ka ng magazine na Reader's Digest. Informative kasi ang Reader's Digest at hindi siya principally for advertisement purposes. So yon kapag nag-import ka ng Reader's Digest na magazine, that is exempt. Nag-import ka ng newspaper, exempt. 
nag-import ka ng books, maski hindi educational, maski yung mga nobela, those are exempt. And take note, there is a new thing here under the CREATE law. And I want you to put it on record. Pati yung e-copy nila, pati yung electronic copies ng books, they are also exempt. So kung nag-import ka ng physical book, exempt. Pati yung electronic format or copy niya, that is exempt. Take note also that the exemption does not extend to other school supplies such as chalks, board markers, pens, notebooks, and papers. Limited lang talaga sa books, newspapers, magazines, review, or bulletins. Kapag ang inimport ay chalks, board markers, pens, notebooks, and papers, they are taxable. Now, let's look at letter D. Passenger or cargo vessels and aircraft, including engine, equipment, and spare parts thereof, for domestic or international transport operation. So ito yung mga sasakyang pandagat, yung mga dumadaan sa karagatan, or yung mga sasakyang dumadaan sa himpapawid. Pati na yung kanilang mga makina at pati na yung kanilang spare parts. Take note, kapag i-import ang mga yan, exempt, VAT exempt. Actually, mas ibenta they are VAT exempt kasi they are VAT exempt goods. Why? Kasi the reason is that the Philippines is composed of islands. Kalat-kalat kasi tayo and of course, it is very impractical na i-connect natin lahat ng isla natin by means of bridges. So of course, limited ang transportation sa Pilipinas kapag ang mga ito ay itatax. Transport is actually essential yan para sa atin. Limited ang commerce kapag yung mode of transport natin is limited. And these are also essentials, yung eroplano o barko. Kaya hindi sila binavat kapag sila ay inimport. Maski ibenta, walang vat yan. So yung letter A, letter B, letter C, at letter D, yan yung mga original na apat. Now, meron tayong idadagdag by virtue of the Bayanihan Act and then by virtue of the CREATE Law. Una, is yung critical or needed healthcare equipment and supplies. Of course, this is for pandemic. Kaya ito ay considered very essential. So when you import them, of course, they are exempt. Next, ano pa? Raw materials to make health equipment and supplies. Itong letter F, ito yung mga gagamitin para dito sa letter E. Yung health equipment and supplies mismo ang inimport mo, example. When we import raw materials to make health equipment and supplies, exempt then. So yung health equipment and supplies and the raw materials used to produce them, they are all exempt. And lastly, letter G, prescription drugs and medicines for una, diabetes, high cholesterol, and hypertension. Yung mga gamot para sa diabetes, high cholesterol, at hypertension, kapag inimport mo, exempt na. Pangalawa, para sa cancer, mental illness, tuberculosis, and kidney diseases. So yung mga gamot sa cancer, mental illness, TB, and kidney diseases, Kapag i-import mo, exempt na rin. So, tandaan mo, ito yung mga exempt goods. And uulitin ko, kapag sinabing exempt goods, kapag in-import, exempt. Ibenta, exempt pa rin ng business tax. And that concludes the VAT on Importation Part 1.